Back in 2008, California voters approved a $33 billion plan to build America's first true high-speed rail system, with trains running at 220 miles per hour between San Francisco and Los Angeles. The promised completion date was 2020. 16 years later, not a single mile of high-speed track exists. The price tag has exploded to as much as $128 billion, and the project has become a symbol of everything that goes wrong when America tries to build something big. And yet construction is genuinely happening right now. In California's Central Valley, over 16,000 workers have completed more than 70 miles of guideway and nearly 60 major structures. January 2025 marked the start of track laying operations. Whether all this represents a genuine breakthrough or the most expensive infrastructure mistake in American history depends entirely on who you ask. Governor Jerry Brown first proposed a California bullet train back in 1979 during his initial term in office, and for nearly two decades the idea remained exactly that, just an idea that got studied and debated but never acted upon. That changed in 1996 when State Senator Quentin Kopp authored Senate Bill 1420, which established the California High Speed Rail Authority and gave it a mandate to plan a statewide system. The vision seemed compelling at the time, connecting California's major cities with the kind of bullet trains that had already transformed transportation across Japan and Europe. After more than a decade of planning studies and route selection, the authority put the question to voters. November 4, 2008 brought the answer, with Californians approving Proposition 1A by a margin of 52.7% to 47.3%. $9.95 billion in bonds would fund the project, with $9 billion going to high-speed rail and $950 million for connecting services. What made Proposition 1A different from a typical funding measure was the specificity of its promises. San Francisco to Los Angeles would take two hours and 40 minutes or less. Trains would hit at least 200 miles per hour. The whole Phase 1 system would cost $33 billion in 2008 dollars, and the initial segment would open by approximately 2020. Ticket prices would run about $55 one way, roughly half the cost of a comparable flight. And here's the part that mattered most to skeptics. The system would require no operating subsidies because fares would exceed operating costs. 494 miles of track would eventually stretch from San Francisco's Transbay Transit Center through San Jose, then through Merced, Fresno, and Bakersfield in the Central Valley, over the Teachapi Mountains to Palmdale, and finally through Burbank to Los Angeles Union Station and Anaheim. California had voted to build something no American state had ever attempted. Timing seemed to favor the project. Just two months after voters approved the bonds, President Barack Obama signed the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, which included billions for high-speed rail projects across the country. California stood ready and waiting. January 28, 2010 brought $2.35 billion in federal stimulus funds, later increased to $2.55 billion and additional grants pushed the early federal commitment to approximately $3.5 billion. With state bonds and federal money secured, the authority faced a decision that would prove controversial for years to come. Where to break ground first? December 2, 2010 saw the authority board vote to begin construction in the Central Valley, the flat agricultural region running through the middle of the state. Critics immediately attacked the choice arguing that building in farmland rather than connecting major population centers would create a quote zero that couldn't attract enough riders. Supporters countered that the Central Valley offered the easiest terrain, with flat land instead of the mountain tunnels required at either end. Governor Jerry Brown signed Senate Bill 1029 on July 18, 2012, formally approving construction funding. The first design-build contract went to a joint venture of Tudor Perini, Zachary and Parsons in August 2013, a $985 million deal. Federal Surface Transportation Board approval came on August 12, 2014, and the project could finally begin. Downtown Fresno hosted the official groundbreaking on January 6, 2015, but the carefully constructed promises from the 2008 campaign had already started falling apart. The cost trajectory tells its own story, and what nobody expected was how fast the numbers would climb. 13 months after the election, 
by December 2009, the estimate had risen from $33 billion to $42.6 billion, a 29% jump. November 2011 brought the real shock when a new business plan showed costs between $65 and $74.5 billion, nearly double the original figure. That 97 to 126% increase stunned lawmakers and voters alike. The authority responded by adopting what it called a blended approach, sharing existing commuter rail tracks in the Bay Area and Los Angeles Basin rather than building dedicated high-speed lines throughout. Costs would drop, but so would speeds on those segments, raising questions about whether the two-hour, 40-minute promise could ever be kept. More revisions followed. April 2012 brought $68.4 billion. February 2020 showed $80.3 billion. The February 2024 estimate landed somewhere between $89 and $128 billion, representing an increase of 170 to 288 percent from what voters had approved. The 171-mile segment currently under construction between Merced and Bakersfield shows the problem in stark terms. Original estimates put the cost at approximately $6.2 billion, but current projections run between $30.5 and $35 billion. That works out to roughly $178 to $205 million per mile, compared to the original $36 million. Understanding why California's project costs so much more than similar systems elsewhere means looking at both the unique challenges of building in America and the specific problems plaguing this effort. The Central Valley, where current construction is focused, actually represents the easiest terrain. The real engineering nightmares wait at both ends. Pacheco Pass between San Jose and Merced will require a 13.5 mile tunnel, the longest intercity rail tunnel ever built in America. The Diablo Range features something called the Franciscan Assemblage Formation, with poor quality rock, active fault zones, and groundwater pressures exceeding 50 bar. Tea Chapi Pass between Bakersfield and Palmdale demands nine tunnels totaling over 10 miles, plus 15 miles of aerial structures rising more than 200 feet. The route climbs from 404 feet at Bakersfield to 4,031 feet at the pass, and that's still not the hardest section. Palmdale to Burbank requires four tunnels totaling 28 miles through the San Gabriel Mountains, crossing the San Andreas Fault and several parallel fault systems. The geology alone would challenge any nation's engineers. But here's the thing. Terrain only explains part of the cost gap. The Transit Cost Project, an academic research initiative studying American infrastructure costs, found that California's $154 to $200 million per mile fare exceeds the global average of approximately $50 million for similar terrain. Spain and France, the researchers noted, achieved construction that was American factors drive costs higher. From extensive environmental review requirements under California's CEQA law, to property acquisition through developed corridors, to stop-and-go funding that creates inefficiency, to healthcare and pension costs built into capital budgets, to the lack of leverage in negotiations with railroads and utilities. The 2018 California State Auditor identified over $600 million in change orders from unforeseen issues alone, a symptom of inadequate planning before construction started. February 2019 brought what looked like a major retreat when Governor Gavin Newsom, newly inaugurated, announced in his State of the State address that California would scale back to completing the Central Valley segment, rather than attempting the full San Francisco to Los Angeles line. Reaction came fierce from all sides. Supporters feared abandonment, while critics claimed vindication. Newsom later clarified that California remained committed to the full system eventually but his comments had exposed how fragile political support becomes for projects measured in decades rather than election cycles. Construction kept moving regardless. September 2020 brought environmental clearance for the Central Valley Y, a complex junction connecting the main line to branch routes, meaning 171 miles now had full approval. San Jose to Merced received similar clearance in April 2022. May 2023 delivered a visible milestone with completion of the Cedar Viaduct in Fresno, a 3,700-foot structure with distinctive arch supports carrying future tracks over city streets. December 2023 brought the largest single federal grant in project history, when the Biden administration awarded $3.1 billion 
through the Fed-State Partnership Program, with an additional $202 million already awarded for grade separations in Shafter. Construction Package 4, covering 22 miles, reached substantial completion by February 2024. December 2025 tells a story of both genuine progress and enormous challenges still ahead. 119 miles remain under active construction, with over 70 miles of guideway complete and nearly 60 of 92 major structures finished. Land acquisition has essentially wrapped up at 99%, with 2274 of 2294 parcels acquired. The workforce numbers are substantial, with over 16,000 construction jobs created and up to 1,700 workers at job sites on any given day. More than 70% of these workers come from Central Valley communities. Spending has reached between $14 and $15.7 billion, and approximately $35.2 billion in total funding has been secured. The sources include $9.95 billion in Proposition 1A bonds, between $6.8 and $7 billion from federal contributions, and cap-and-trade revenue providing roughly $1 billion annually since 2014. California extended cap-and-trade funding through 2045 in September 2025, committing an estimated additional $20 billion. The math reveals the problem. Current Phase 1 cost estimates run between $89 and $128 billion. $35 billion secured against a potential $128 billion. Needed leaves a gap exceeding $93 billion. Environmental clearance now covers 463 of 494 miles, 94% of the route. Only Los Angeles to Anaheim remains, with draft environmental documents released in December 2025. The most serious current crisis involves federal funding. July 2025 brought the Trump administration's termination of approximately $4 billion in grants, with Transportation Secretary Sean Duffy calling the project a quote one Duffy, put it bluntly in his announcement saying federal dollars are not a blank check and that after over a decade of failures, the authority's mismanagement and incompetence proved it cannot build its train to nowhere on time or on budget. California filed suit immediately. CEO Ian Chudry responded that canceling these grants without cause isn't just wrong. It's illegal, describing them as legally binding agreements the authority had fully honored. A federal judge rejected the Department of Justice's motion to dismiss in December 2025, and that $4 billion now sits in a legal trust pending resolution. The debate has produced memorable statements from all sides. Governor Newsom declared in July 2025 that Trump wants to hand China the future and abandon the Central Valley, adding that with Texas high-speed rail failing to take off, California remains miles ahead of others. Former Governor Jerry Brown, the man who first dreamed up California bullet trains in 1979 offered a vigorous defense, pointing out that California is a rich state and that both Spain and France have lower domestic product, yet built their systems, arguing that California has to rise to the occasion. Republican Representative Kevin Kiley took the opposite view, calling the project a blight on the landscape and an embarrassment to the state that showcases political ineptitude on an epic scale. The most telling assessment came from Louis S. Thompson, who chaired the project's peer review group for 15 years, concluding that the primary lesson he drew was that Proposition 1A was at best an optimistic aspiration that was nowhere near being adequately planned, designed, or funded. Official authority projections target 2030 to 2033 for the start of operations between Merced and Bakersfield, but a February 2025 Inspector General report found that timeline unlikely, noting that a quarter of the way through the eight-year schedule, adjustments had already consumed a third of the buffer time. Ridership projections have collapsed as well. The 2008 business plan projected over 90 million passengers annually by 2030 for the full system. Current projections show just 28.4 million riders for Phase 1 by 2040 a 68% reduction. The Central Valley segment alone might attract only 1.6 to 2.2 million annual passengers. The existing San Joaquin Amtrak service carried approximately 910,000 passengers in 2024, providing context for those numbers. 
December 2025, saw the authority launch a process to attract private investors, with a target of summer 2026 for a code development agreement that might help close the funding gap. A February 2025 poll found 56% of Californians still consider high-speed rail a good use of state funds. Showing public support persists despite everything. California's high-speed rail project works as both a cautionary tale and an ongoing test of American ambition. China constructed over 28,000 miles of high-speed rail in approximately 15 years, while California spent 16 years without laying any high-speed track at all. Whether this project ultimately succeeds or fails, it has already revealed hard truths about building in America. The country has lost the ability to build quickly and affordably. Environmental and regulatory systems create delays that compound costs year after year. Political cycles run shorter than construction timelines, and mega-projects require sustained commitment that democratic systems struggle to maintain. The next few years will determine whether California's bullet train becomes proof that America can still accomplish great things or stands as a monument to ambitions the country can no longer afford to pursue. Either outcome will be studied for generations. The story of how 33 billion became 128 billion and how art, quote, died to tur became now, quote, 31. If you found this breakdown of one of America's most controversial infrastructure projects useful, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell. We cover mega projects from around the world, the engineering behind them, and the stories of what goes right and what goes wrong. Drop a comment below with your thoughts on California's bullet train, whether you think it should keep going or whether the state should cut its losses. And share this video with anyone interested in infrastructure, transportation, or understanding why America struggles to build.